Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life and I'm coming to you today as a follow-up to last week's video. If you didn't see it, I talk about the many habits and rules of the secular Franciscan order as we now know it. Um, I got a tiny bit of flack for that, so and honestly I've been in a lot of dialogue with people the last week and so here is my current take on it. When I talked in the other video about my big family and I consider everyone in it brothers and sisters even though they might not be my blood brother and sister. Um, I kind of feel that way even more about the secular Franciscan order this week than I did last week. Here's the reason why. I do believe the secular Franciscan order that goes by the initials OFS in the US at least. Um, I do believe that is the true third order of St. Francis and why do I believe that? Because we had the original root, and a, which was we are canonically established. So it's the Pope who has changed our rule all along. It's not even us. We've had input, absolutely, in the rule of 1978. Um, but it, it's actually the Popes who canonically established us, and they're the ones who changed the rule. So that's why I think that that's the official secular Franciscan order. But don't, don't, uh, or sorry, third order of St. Francis, but don't, don't turn me off yet hear me out. Um, I do, however, have come to make some decent friends in other Catholic third orders of St. Francis. And as long as they are following the teachings of the Catholic Church, and they're like following the admonitions of St. Francis, and one of the rules of St. Francis, one of the rules that had been given to us by a Pope, I think the first one was drafted out by a Cardinal. And of course, it was based on uh, Pope Francis, or Pope Francis, St. Francis is, uh, you know, when he opened the Bible, it was based on his scripture readings. <sighs> Tough day today. I'm trying to say it all right so I don't offend anyone, and I'm going to trip over my words. And hey, I think that's fair. Um, so bear with me a little bit more. Um, you know, St. Francis originally had that when, when God gave me brothers, and then he showed me how, what to do with them. And he went to the priest, and they opened the Bible together, and they got some verses that told them how to live. And the first rule, I think, was based a lot off of that. And then, of course, since then, we've had the admonitions and other guidance from St. Francis. And I think the popes have taken those in, in mind um, when they've written our rules, as well as the rule of 1978, when it was rewritten. And we had a lot of input and lots of other Franciscans had input. I think it does really reflect it. Um, so, yeah, all the other Catholic Third Orders of St. Francis that I've met are awesome. I have not personally met anyone from any of the non-Catholic Third Orders of St. Francis. I know they exist, but I have not many, met any of those people yet. Um, yeah, do... I'm going to recognize that they're different than us, and that's okay. One of the reasons why is even in the secular Franciscan order, as you visit from fraternity to fraternity, there are going to be lots of different flavors, and yet we're all living the same rule. There's might be, and some of them might have more uh, of a poor Claire spirituality. Some may have more of a reflection of a Capuchin spirituality. Some may have more of uh, social justice of the conventional friars. And we're not directly affiliated with any of them, right? We're not under any of them, but they are our brothers and sisters. And if they're in our area or whatever, those they, that might be reflected as well in the secular Franciscan fraternity that meets near one of those doors. As well as it's just people are different. Uh, there's a story, you know, somebody, they w wanted to join the secular Franciscan order, he and his wife, and they were going, they went to a meeting and they were like, huh, what? And then they found out they could establish their own fraternity. Um, and there's a whole process for that. You can find that on our national websites where I'm going to recommend you go look for that. And so there is a way to order it, to organize it. And yeah, not every fraternity is going to be a carbon copy of the other, even though we're all following the same rule. Um, do I still all pray and wish that we were one? I wish that we are all united. And we are, because we're all Catholic, we're all universal. I would prefer we'd all be in one order together um, and dialoguing back and forth, just like how there are different flavors among our fraternities. I kind of do wish we were all one, and that may be a little bit silly as well, but that's, that's me. That's who I am. 
You can ask my brothers and sisters, that's how I am. It doesn't matter technically even who your parents are, <laughs> my family to be my brother or sister. Um, so yeah, that's me. I'm going to wish that. I'm going to pray for that. Just as I'm going to pray that all the world religions are going to be united under the Catholic Church, under Jesus Christ, I'm still going to pray and wish for that. Now, is that realistic for, for little old me? Hey, who knows? Didn't God call St. Francis to go out and rebuild the church? Absolutely. And I think that's what a lot of us are doing. And if there is any conflict in what I'm saying or any conflict between the different fraternities or different third orders, what I'm going to say is the only solution for us, oh, I guess there's technically more than one, um, you know, somebody says to me, sometimes we get caught up in the romantic idea of being Franciscan. And so I don't want to get so caught up into the secular Franciscan order is the only third order and oh, the angels sing every time we gather. Um, I, I don't want to get caught up in that because the fact is that we are Franciscan. We are all Franciscan and we're all Catholic. And I, I think that's wonderful. I, I, I think that's great. I, I honestly do. And so... I would love to continue interacting with my brothers and sisters in Francis and Claire, my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, because I think that's the most important thing. And I've been studying the admonitions and you really get that. The Eucharist is like the central admonition. And if we get that right, if we get the Catholic part right, I think everything else is kind of going to be okay. Now, that doesn't say that we're all going to be perfect and live in perfect harmony all the time just because we're in a secular Franciscan order or a third order of St. Francis, any lay association of the faithful, right? Um, what's our solution? Try and live whatever rule you're living under, whatever rule of St. Francis, third order rule you're following. Try and live it more perfectly. I think that's a big problem because I think with all the rules, it's just a danger. Um, and, and it's it's the danger in all religion, right? And in all of Christianity, in all of all of the Catholic faith, um, there is a danger of putting so much emphasis on scripture and study that you forget your fellow man who is suffering, or you focus so much on the suffering of your fellow man, you forget about the God who created you and the worship that is due him his for being just so completely awesome and incredible and you know giving his life up on the cross for us because he didn't have to do it and he could have just you know been like you're forgiven Whoa. but he didn't he entered into our suffering to give us that bolster i mean i hear some atheists say like you have an invisible man in the sky and he ignores the suffering of children and he doesn't he entered into that suffering. He came as a little child. He entered into it. He understands that. And if we will just turn to him and trust him, he shows us the way to help the little children. And yes, it is prayer and it is sacrifice. We are whatever third order, same phrases you're in. We are brothers and sisters of penance. We need to get out there. We need to pray. We need to sacrifice. We need to spend time in adoration. We need to receive communion. We need to go to confession. We need to get spiritual direction. And we need to be active in our communities. That includes charity. And it includes building a more fraternal world. So for us, that fraternal world starts at home. It starts literally in our domestic churches. But for those of your domestic church may be a little smaller than others, don't forget, it's not just our domestic church, it's our local church and our local communities. And in this time of pandemic, when we're not really going out, you have a chance to build a stronger neighborhood. And yes, where you live may have stronger uh, regulations. If you have, uh, you live in a neighborhood, put out some chairs six feet apart, invite your neighbors, put out a little sign, say, I'm going to be out here reading a book tomorrow. You want to come hang out with me? join me. Um, if you don't get out, but maybe you have access to Zoom or the internet, put a little sign in the window of your apartment building or on your front door and say, hey, I'm going to do a Zoom Bible study. Do you want to join me? Leave your email address and see if people don't respond to you. Um, we have the great opportunity of a lot of people are going to start studying St. Joseph in just a few weeks. It'll be on February 15th, I think, is when that study is going to begin for most people who are doing it. There are some other people who are doing a 44-day study, and that's going to start, I think, on February 3rd. I believe that's the Theology of the Body Institute 
The 33-day one is starting on the 15th, and that is through the uh, Divine Mercy Fathers, so go to divinemercy.org for that. Um, so there are a lot of people getting gearing up on Lenten studies. There's people already doing Fiat 90, Exodus 90. There is a great way to build community out there. We just need to make the effort. Oh, as well, if you'd like to do one of the great studies that I did that was tremendous impact on my life. Like, I can't even begin to tell you the healing, the comfort, the camaraderie of my sacred sisters in Women of Grace. They have virtual studies as well as live in-person studies. And go to, to Women of Grace's website and find that out. Um, that is just a beautiful study. Guys, I don't know what is a beautiful study for men right now. Um, it'd be nice if I knew one, but I don't right now. I'm, I apologize for that. Um, and there are just some really great things out there right now. And if we're going to build a more fraternal world, it starts with making a brother and sister, right? So get out there, meet people, leave a note on your neighbor's front door. Hey, I was thinking of you today. Just something, anything. Yeah, I think we can do it. So I know I'm always saying it, and I don't know who of you watches these till the end, but if you've watched it to the end, I'm going to tell you the generic, like, share, subscribe. And, and if you don't like it, tell me why in the comments below. I, I do listen to those. I absolutely address and read every single one. I may not always agree with you, but I do read them. But I'm also going to say, if you've got ideas for building more fraternal worlds, something that you've done in your community during this COVID time, or you know of a great study. Um, oh, right. Father Mike Schmitz is doing a podcast with Ascension Press that's reading the Bible in a year. It's not too late to start. It's not any time you jump in, hey, that's more than you were doing before. So it's a podcast. You can listen to it anywhere. Um, yeah, that's Ascension Press, Bible in a Year with Father Mike Schmitz. If you, but if you've got a great idea for building a more fraternal world, put it in the comments below so other people can read it as well. And I'll share that on my Facebook page as well. Make sure people hear these great ideas. We do have an Our Blooming Catholic Life Facebook page and feel free to post it in there. Give your ideas. Um, that's how I'm trying to build a more fraternal world is through all of you. Um, and God bless you because you're all around the world. So I think we're going to have some pretty creative and fun ideas. Just start sharing them. God bless you, friends. Have a blessed day. And don't forget to tell everyone that. Don't forget to pray for everyone. God bless you. Bye.